It's more, uh, more banter uh, and joking and ridiculous stories. Yeah, well, that's what we need to do. As we are live, as this is how we're going to start the show. Oh yeah. Hey guys, how's everybody doing? <laughs> my audio is working right now. Oh no, it's not. Sorry. <laughs> you know, I had some people that uh that commented they're like, "Hey, where's the podcast? You didn't talk about it. You didn't mention it." But yeah, we took a week off. Yeah. And we are back now. Yeah, we took the week off because Bengal is it's not a good fellow. He, he, he's a good fellow, and he let me take the week off because of finals. There you go. So we were just talking before the show started how Chandler Jones is a soft son of a gun. Um, <laughs> that was the vernacular. <laughs> yeah. That was the cleanest version of what I said possible. Um as we were referencing when he got traded from the Patriots to the uh, the Cardinals, that he searched up his own name and every single person that didn't have glowing remarks about him, he blocked. He blocked like 5,000 people. And it just, it was so, it was so funny. It was so bad. Um, but today's show is going to be a good one. Today's show is going to be a good one as we are going to be discussing playoffs we're going to be discussing week 17 what happened we're going to be doing our predictions for who wins awards and who we actually think should win awards and we can talk about some head coaching vacancies and we're going to talk a little bit about john gruden i'm, I'm upset i gotta tell you uh i do like the raiders if i, I mean I'm, i don't have second favorite teams or anything but I, I do like them as a franchise but what i what i don't like is the idea, even the concept of not hearing John Gruden on my Monday nights. Oh, I love God. I, I, I mute him. Well, you're, um, you're ignorant. I mute That's him. I, I mute him because, one, he complains about every single officiating call. A guy could literally be stabbed on the field. He's like, I don't know. I don't see anything there. And, I don't agree with that. And McDonough just annoys the hell out of me. So I, yeah, I can't. John Gruden is the best. Yeah, but. I mean, you can only say spider two wide banana so many times in a broadcast. And so how I don't many even grinders. know if I've ever heard him say it. Yeah, he actually doesn't say it in the broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> you're, just, you're just throwing out one ignorant thing after the other, waiting for uh, something to stay. I, I'm, I, am, I am slandering John Gruden. It's slander, that's what it is. So, you, you discuss John Gruden for a minute and what the implications are about him. Um, I'm looking up the draft history of John Gruden so we can have some interesting discussions about who he took. Well, I do want to say first and foremost, I think John Gruden is an overrated head coach. I will say that. That being said, I think he still is, or by the time of him leaving, was one of the best coaches in the NFL. And he was truly was a quarterback guru. Look what he did with an aging Rich Gannon. MVP season, Jeff Garcia with the Buccaneers, like, he takes these older quarterbacks and just anyone and makes them fit the system no. and play extremely well and at a high level. No. He yes, takes yes, yes. old quarterbacks and turns them into players. He could not develop a young quarterback for the life of him. But it's the same concept. No, it's not. You Absolutely can it is. if you can't draft a quarterback and make them work, you are you're doing something wrong. Who did and, John Gruden even gra and draft? Chris Sims in the third? Uh, Marquise Tuiasasopo. Uh, let's see, in the Buccaneers, he took Chris Sims in the third. Yeah, they didn't even bother drafting quarterbacks. Yeah, so don't, don't tell me about developing they, young they, quarterbacks. They didn't bother drafting quarterbacks because they knew he couldn't do it. And the reason he couldn't they do it is it. because, no, it's because his terminology was too complex. When you have coach speak, you have so many different ways that you can describe things, and he literally makes you spell out every single play. Literally, every single route that a player has to go, he has terminology for. Instead of doing a number system, instead of doing a color system, instead of doing anything, he spells it out so long that it's overwhelming to young quarterbacks. It's not intelligent. That, that's why I don't think he could ever develop a young quarterback. He might be a very smart coach in terms of his development of older guys who know the game and have been in the league for a while, but his terminology made it impossible for young quarterbacks to succeed. I'd be excited to see what he can do with Derek Carr. That's, I would that's too. an interesting player. One yeah. that, in my opinion, is not a top quarterback in the league by any stretch of the imagination, yeah. but it's one with potential. Yes. 
A lot um, of potential. I would say that if John Morton goes there, they're going to go to an air raid and they're going to unleash Derek Carr, which is going to help him. But you're not going to fix his issues in the pocket. That is not something that gets fixed. He is deathly afraid of pressure. And it is not changing, no matter what. That that doesn't change. It's, you know, when you're afraid of pressure, even with his offensive line, one of the best offensive lines in the league in terms of pass protection, dude cannot handle even a three-man rush if it gets within a country mile of him. And that's that's a problem, you know. But I think Morton, if he could make Josh McCown look great, I think he'll make Derek Carr look pretty damn good too. And that is not one of our words that is going to get us kicked off the podcast. <laughs> so we still have one. So here's the draft history uh, looking at John Gruden. So he was with the Raiders from uh, 99 to 2001. He took Matt Stinchcomb in the first round, Tony Bryant, uh, Demean Douglas in the fourth round. Uh, he took Sebastian Janikowski at number 17. He took Joey Porter. Okay, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, first of all, Jerry Porter was a good player. Jerry, yeah, Jerry uh, Porter. Uh, Sebastian Janikowski, well, one of the best kickers we've seen. However, a lot of these decisions were not John Gruden's. I know, I know. I'm just, I'm just going through the draft history. I, right. I think Reggie McKenzie's a very, very good general manager, just for, Dude. just for points. But I'm sure that Gruden had some say in in some of these picks. Um, they took Leckler the same year they took Janikowski. <laughs> they took Both a kicker. Best, though, to be fair. I, they did. But, They're I mean, they took the a, best we've ever seen. I know. They they are. But 20, 2001 was a terrible draft. Um, Derek Gibson, Tuya Sopo, DeLawrence Grant, Ray Perriman, Chris Cooper, Derek Combs, Kenyon Rambo. <laughs> um, then he went to Tampa Bay. And 2002, Marquise Walker in the third round was their first pick. So I'm going to cross that one off the list. Uh, Dwayne White, pick 64, was their first pick. Uh, Chris Sims. Uh, Michael Clayton, not a bad player. Not a bad player at all. Will Allen, not a bad player at all. Um, took him in the fourth round. Uh, That's pretty two, solid. 2005, Cadillac Williams, good pick, number five. Yeah. Barrett Rudd, good pick. Um, rude. Rude, Sorry. Sorry. Just say, hey, I'm just trying to I know. increase Al your level of credibility. I know. Alex Smith, the tight end, um, in the third round, he played for 10 years in the league. Uh, Davin Joseph, Jeremy Trueblood, Bruce Gradkowski. And, I mean, you know, there's, there's hit and miss. Yeah. But um, 2008 was his last year, right? 2008, yes. Um, Akib Talib, first round. Didn't work out in Tampa Bay. Yeah, but he became Good player. a solid player. Jeremy so Zuta. You could say the potential was there. Yeah. They saw it. Yeah, so I mean, it's not like this team has a great history with drafting anyway. The Buccaneers do. But That's true. That, I think he, at least draft-wise, they did a pretty solid job with him. Um, his career record, 185, which is definitely nothing to sneeze at. However, you could say that in 2000, 2001, he had one of the best teams in the league and squandered both of them in losses to the Ravens, losses to the Patriots. Um, then he went to Tampa Bay, won the Super Bowl over the Raiders. Then 7-9, 5-11, 11-5, 4-12, 9-7, 9 and 9-7. So, I mean, you see, the, you see the good, you see the bad in terms of his coaching record. It, it was long enough ago that I think he probably has learned a lot, and he still would be one of the youngest head coaches in the NFL. That's wild. He is 54 years old. So we can both agree on that John Gruden, clearly a better coach than any type of a general matter. We don't know exactly what control he would have uh, would have had over the draft selections. And not yes. everyone has to be both. You don't have to have the, you know – Bill Belichick, GM, coach combo, right? Yeah. Some players, or excuse me, some coaches can just come in and coach. And the yeah. GMs make the picks. The, the scouts help with the picks. Head yeah. coach has some influence. Sometimes yeah. just like build me a team and I go out and coach. And John Gruden is exceptional at coaching. Yeah, and, and he also has a good guy. pipeline for him. Bill Callahan, Rod Marinelli, Raheem Morris, Gus Bradley, Mark Trestman, Jay Gruden, Mike Tomlin, Sean McVay, 
all were coaches, were assisting coaches under John Gruden. Those are some solid names. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, yeah, Sean McVay got his coaching start with John Gruden at the age of 22 years old as a coaching assistant. It's wild. So he gave him his opportunity, which worked out pretty well so far for him as a head coach. Yeah, absolutely, and we'll get Wait, to is, him. Is a he little the youngest later. head coach in the NFL by he, a country mile? He's 31. Kyle Shanahan is also young. Shanahan is 38. So yes, by seven years. Yeah. 31 years old. My goodness. So, so, crazy. so I think the hire of John Gruden. While I wouldn't say he was the best coach in the world back then, I will say this. His influence is going to be excellent for Oakland slash Las Vegas. Because. So gross. It is. Because he's bringing in most likely Morton. He's bringing in, what is he bringing in? Zampezi from. I don't know. I don't know any of the logistics. Okay. But I I know that he's going to be bringing in coaches. Good coaches. Um, Rich Cannon's going to be his quarterback coach. Interesting. So, I mean, you see that he's bringing in people that are going to elevate everybody. And his influence is going to make going there an attractive thing for players and for coaches. Plus Reggie McKenzie. Plus they have a plethora of talent. And as long as... You have arguably the best defensive player in the NFL with no pieces really around him. Yeah. And they're a young player. Gary and Conley, I think, is a tremendous player. Yeah. Obi Melifanu yeah. has great potential on the defense side of the ball. And I think that's the main issue. Carl Joseph does too. Carl Joseph, I loved him at West Virginia. Yeah. Sure tackler. He needs to be in, uh, an in-the-box guy, and Reggie Nelson can't be the free safety there. But yeah. I'm not sure if Obi Melifanu is an over-the-top free safety. No, I think so. Obi probably fits better as a, as a nickel corner, honestly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because that way he plays in the box is that pseudo linebacker role, gets to play and run fits and also gets into man to man situations. He's but, such a tremendous athlete. Yeah, I mean he's so he's good. absurd. They have no linebackers at all. Uh, Danico Autry isn't terrible, but he's not good, and that's really all they have around him, and that's terrible. But on offense, they have pieces. They have a really good offensive line. They have Lynch for now. They have Carr. They have Cook, who is at least a Average NFL tight end. You have Crabtree, who most likely isn't coming back, but is extremely talented. You have Cooper, who has all the potential in the world. I mean, this is a team that really could just take steps forward. And I think they were just held back by Jack Del Rio. Um, He's not a bad head coach, but he just didn't fit. Per the coaching metric, I saw that there's a... uh, a website that actually grades coaches by in-game decisions. Yeah, we were going over that. I think on what, episode three, maybe? Yeah, I think so. Del Rio ended up 30th. Yeah. Pagano and Hugh tied for 32nd. <laughs> so, you know, it's... that's. I value Jack Del Rio better than 30th. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it seemed like he just let everybody do their thing. It didn't seem like he was actually guiding anybody, which... Because this was a team everyone expected to be deep in the playoffs. Except for me. Yeah. I'm saying talent-wise. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, except for me. It's fair play. <laughs> but uh, why don't we transition? Week 17. Because then we can talk about the playoffs. Playoffs? Talking about playoffs? Playoffs? <laughs> Classic so- Giamora. So first off, woot woot Colts four and twelve gives the Texans the Colts hard at the end of that game. Given the Texans the fourth overall pick, which gives the Browns the fourth overall pick as well as the first. Let's go. That's Um, wild. It's crazy. The Browns too. I I want the Browns to be good, and they're actually not as far away as they look. They're they're a head coach and a quarterback. Without a doubt, the best (laughs) zero win team of all time. (laughs) Yes, easily. Without a doubt. Easily. Um, the Giants won their third game of the season. It didn't matter at all whether they I won or lost. The game. It was very cold. I bet. I bet. Um, the Cowboys beat the Eagles 6 to nothing in a shootout. A <laughs> shootout as well. Yeah. Um, Corey Coleman cost the Browns their first win of the season. 
and that is going to haunt me for a very long time. I'm happy they went 0-16. I, I, I would have been if they fired Hugh. <laughs> I don't know why they haven't. Because Jimmy Haslam doesn't understand football. He's trash, man. He's so bad. He's so bad. Ugh. He's the Jeffrey Loria of owners in football. Um, the Falcons mollywopped the Panthers in Atlanta, which is a little disconcerting for Carolina moving forward. The Chiefs won over the Broncos in Patrick Mahomes' first career NFL start. It is the first, count it, first win in 31 years by a Chiefs starting quarterback who was drafted by the team. That's insane. The last one was Todd Blackledge. What a beast. In 1986. I like it. That is a stat and a half. Patrick Mahomes, and he looked good. He looked really good. Um, Titans beat the Jaguars in what I, at least I expected to have happen um, to make the playoffs. The 49ers crushed the Rams, who were sitting most of their starters, but I have a feeling they probably would have beaten them anyway, the way that the 49ers have been playing. Debatable. What a sick team all of a sudden. Seriously, and they're only going to get better. a playoff team if they, you know, yeah. didn't start off as bad as they did. Yeah, and they, uh, fun fact, the last team, coming into this season, uh, of teams that started 0-9, the best record that any of them have ever had was 3-13. and The 49ers started 0-9 and, and went 6-10. and They doubled the win total that any other team in NFL history has ever had after an 0-9 start. So, they don't even have that much talent. <laughs> I mean, they have yeah. pieces. But this is a team that not literally... Really even. They don't really even have pieces. They, I mean, they have some around the board, but not... They have, yeah, like, like what, three... They have Buckner, they have Armstead, they have... I wouldn't call Eric Armstead a piece. No, okay, fine. I'll call Solomon Thomas and Reuben Foster. Solomon Thomas needs to prove that he can be a piece because he was terrible in terms of pass rush productivity this year. Rookie season, yeah. injured, I'm going to yeah. give him a pass. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving him a pass as well. Reuben Foster, absolutely. Um, Akella Witherspoon, he played well. Um, really? Yeah, from what I saw, he played pretty well. Um, off, offensive line, Joe Staley. Pierre Garcon, George Kittle, Matt Brenda might be something. Matt Breda. Breda, Breda. Sorry. I, why, there's no N is there, is, is there? Okay. No. Okay. Matt Breda. Thank you. Um, Marquise Goodwin's a, a pretty decent number two. Trent Taylor's a good player. No, don't, don't. Okay. <laughs> I love Marquise Goodwin, former Texas Longhorn. Marquise Goodwin is not good. No, right? I, I didn't say he was a good player. He, he I said he was a good number two. Yeah, he's a speed guy. Will Fuller's a good number two because he can take the top off a of defense, not because he's a good player. I Will Fuller over Marquise Goodwin. Well, I don't know. Will Fuller has the smallest hands. He can't even hold a single a single whopper. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's 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 bad. But you know, it's being able to take the top off a of defense is pretty important. I think. I think it opens everything else up underneath. He doesn't run routes particularly well. He doesn't have good hands. He's, he runs fast. Yeah, he does. He has yeah. refined a little bit as a route runner this season. I will give him that. But he still has a long way to go. This is easily his best year of his career, but it still is not up to par, per se. But he could be a piece. He could be, maybe okay, maybe a fourth receiver. Is that better? I'd take him at four. Yeah. And, uh, and, and how do you feel about Trent Taylor? Very good. Okay, so they have pieces, but obviously the most important two are Kyle Shanahan and Jimmy Garoppolo. Yep. So, let's keep moving. Bills, 22-16 win over the Dolphins. Um, that wasn't really unexpected. The Dolphins are pretty bad, and David Fales almost beat them on a fourth-quarter comeback, which... Uh, Chargers killed the Raiders in Phillip Rivers' excellent game, only to miss the playoffs, which was so disappointing. Um, Cardinals beat the Seahawks in Bruce Arians' final game off of a... Go figure, Blair Walsh missed field goal with 40 seconds left. Classic. The Buccaneers beat the Saints 31-24 on a Jameis Winston. Was that a 90-yard drive? And I a don't bomb know. to Chris Good to Chris Godwin. 
That Chris was, Godwin's a decent player, I'll tell you yeah. that much. He and Mike Evans. O.J. Howard, Cameron Bright? O.J. Howard, he got more involved um, after the midway part of the season. Yeah. But uh, next year, I think, if they really start to utilize two tight ends more, because Cameron Bright's good, but he's also a free agent. Yeah. Do you even want to re-sign Cameron Bright? I don't know. I probably wouldn't and run more 11 yeah. personnel. Yeah. Um, but the Buccaneers upset the Saints, which the Saints didn't care about because they won the division anyway. And the Bengals! The Bengals eliminated the Ravens. Oh my god, that game was so painful. I feel bad for Flacco, man, because he didn't even play that poorly. His He had a pick six because he hit Chris Moore in the hands and he tipped it right to Drake Kirkpatrick. Oh, that was... Uh, did you hear what they did? What the Bills fans did with Andy Dalton? Uh, donated to his charity. Yeah, because of that win, they donated. I think a hundred thousand dollars. That's the Bills number I saw did, too. To Andy Dalton's charity for giving them their first playoff berth this millennium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Bills aren't exactly great. I got someone in my uh, my comment section who said, uh, "Like, ooh, Bengal, you said." Uh, Bills would never go anywhere. Like They barely scraped into a wild card <laughs> out of the playoffs. And now they're taking on the Jaguars, most likely with either well, yeah. a very beaten up LaShawn McCoy or no LaShawn McCoy. And an offense that heavily features the god, the bowling ball, Mike Tolbert. So, what was your biggest takeaway from this week? From, um, yeah. I would say that it was very interesting to see some of these teams compete. Uh, I think the Steelers Browns game was one of my favorites. I was watching that um, at halftime of the Giants Giants Redskins. Yeah, I was at that, so I didn't really get to see many games around yeah. the league other than at halftime and stuff. But yeah. Landry Jones put together a pretty decent performance. Isn't that so depressing? <laughs> What's no, up? isn't that so depressing? No Antonio Brown, no Le'Veon Bell, and his Landry numbers Jones. were really good. I know he carved up the Browns' defense. I just, oh god, that was painful to watch. And he Juju, we'll get a deal now. Can you imagine someone oh. signs Landry Jones like one of these Matt Flynn situations? Browns are going to. Browns are going to sign every quarterback who doesn't deserve it. Browns at one and four will draft a quarterback. Can't miss if you draft two, right? Yeah, I mean, go the old uh, Madden 17 franchise approach. The Ravens took three quarterbacks in the first three rounds in one of my franchises. Oh, yeah? Yeah, That's and they were cool. all 75 overall. <laughs> and then they started RG3 over all three of them. So <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> it was really Love incredible. Madden. <laughs> they fixed that, at least, but that was, that was pretty bad. Um, but, yeah, Corey Coleman, did you see how that game ended? No. It was fourth and two. Kaiser, condensed pockets, scrambles around, rolls out, throws to Corey Coleman, and he puts his hands right above his right shoulder, and it goes right through his hands. Turnover on downs. They lose the game. It was on, like, the Steelers, like, 30-yard line. That was the game. It's almost like Corey Coleman isn't very good. I mean, I don't want to jump to conclusions. It's almost like they shouldn't be targeting him on fourth and two. Find the man, the myth, the legend, Josh Gordon. Yeah, I mean... He's actually so good still. He really is. I mean... It's amazing. He missed a, He missed how much time? Three years? <laughs> and he came back, and he was playing well? I mean, that's crazy. But it's... I don't know, man. Um, my biggest takeaway, Patrick Mahomes. He looked really, really good against a very talented Denver Broncos defense. Did not get to see much of it. Or any of it, I should say. Basically, he played well enough that they are going to feel confident moving on from Alex Smith this offseason. You have to. Is he a free agent or? No, they're trading him probably. Which to Buffalo. I could see them trading him to the Browns. That, I could see him. I could that see would be him. interesting. I could see him, Bradford, Bridgewater, or Keenum going to Cleveland. This could be a very, very interesting offseason. Yeah, uh, this is gonna. There, this is the first time in a long time that we might have actual quarterbacks on the market. Tyrod Taylor, Kirk mm -hmm. Cousins, Case Keenum, Teddy Bridgewater, Sam Bradford, Alex Smith. AJ McCarron is going to be a free agent, but I don't think he's that good. Uh, Let me I, ask you a question, just to yes. interject real quick here. 
you know, we're both draft guys. Yeah. Um, just to skip ahead several months to the draft. Yeah. Quick question. With the number one overall pick, do you hear a quarterback's name called? And is it by the Cleveland Browns? Yes and yes. I'm I'm saying they I'm saying they go Josh Rosen and they get a veteran in free agency. Interesting. I, I think I think Rosen makes the most sense. I would love Mayfield, but I can understand the risk. I think Rosen is a safe player from the perspective of he is a silky smooth passer. He is a good decision maker. He's a smart kid. I think Dorsey and company are going to be pressured to take a quarterback number one because they passed up the past two years taking one in the first round. And I don't think that the pressure alone is going to be uh, – I think that's going to be a big enough reason that they're going to do it. What do you think? Uh, I think they should trade down, and I don't think they will. Why do you think they should trade down? I think there's talent across uh, – draft and the number one overall pick is too much value almost and you pick it four. i mean worst case scenario what we'll say two maybe three quarterbacks get if, drafted before the fourth pick if three are gone i would be scenario. so sad i mean we're oh. absolutely ridiculous oh god because you know they wouldn't take mayfield you know what they would end up getting stuck with Josh freaking Allen, who's going Dude, to be a tight the Broncos end. Broncos are super high on Josh Allen. I know. Elway went to his game. Elway sees a lot of himself in Josh Allen. He probably does. He has a strong arm. John Elway is an idiot. That's John. why I don't respect <laughs> former players who evaluate the game like Deion Sanders. It's like you don't know the game just because you were ridiculously fast and refined your coverage skills, right? Yeah. John Elway's like, oh, this guy can also throw the ball 100 yards in the air. Oh, like, they, they, they put a graphic up in the Broncos game. It is the best graphic you will ever see about Paxton Lynch. Okay? Strengths. Arm strength, mobility, height. Weaknesses. Durability, vision, accuracy. Did you just describe John Elway? <laughs> I just described a quarterback who literally has nothing that makes you a good quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, okay, this is the guy who we take in the first round. That's... That's and fantastic. you trade up to get him, mind you. Yeah, it just I don't I don't respect Elway's ability to s- scout uh, quarterbacks. I mean, he's been running out Trevor Simeon for two seasons. That's just because Peyton Manning fell into his lap. It doesn't I mean he was going to pay Brock Osweiler eighty million dollars. I mean, this is not a guy who is good at evaluating quarterbacks. So. Um, Darnold has declared for the draft already. Rosen has declared for the draft already. I don't think Darnold has the talent to go in the top two rounds. But that being said, I don't know where teams see him. He's going to be a top 10 pick. That's ridiculous. He's going to be a top 10 pick, and he's going to have to sit for at least a year. Um, I heard that Lamar Jackson is undecided on whether he's declaring for the draft, which I'm okay with. I, I don't think he'll get anything more out of Louisville. But... I mean, he statistically, he has nothing left to prove. Performance-wise, he is ahead of Darnold and Allen in their development by a lot. So, I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. This whole quarterback class, this is a year where you're going to see five quarterbacks get taken in the first two rounds, maybe more. You know, Mason Rudolph might get thrown in there. Kyle How many went last year? Four? Four, yeah. Um, Davis Webb was a third-rounder? Yep. Okay. So, yeah, four. Um but, I mean, you have guys, Kyle Laletta from Richmond, FCS product. Um, he'll be an interesting player. Uh, Jake Browning probably won't be anything more than like a sixth or seventh round pick or UDFA. Um, Luke Falk might go in the first three, four rounds. Mason Rudolph, Darnold, Allen, Jackson, Mayfield, Rosen. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of guys in this class. Um, Drew Locke might go in the, I think in Drew the first Locke's four rounds. Back. I hope so. I hope That's he what does. I've heard. Okay, well, that's good because I gave him like a sixth round, fifth round grade. He was not impressive at all. Um, But, I mean, this is going to be an interesting class. And the combination of free agents, trades, I mean, where's Tyrod Taylor going to go? Buffalo doesn't want him. Jacksonville. But they want Blake Bortles. Shad Khan came out today and said, Blake Bortles is our quarterback of now and the future. 
Why? And he said, maybe maybe we aren't so stupid when we picked up his extension. No, they're just... <laughs> <laughs> he had a decent second half of the season. No, he didn't. No, statistically, he did, statistically, um, he, he had many dropped interceptions, and he still was a bum, but... I'm not on the Blake Bortles bandwagon, so don't even try to insinuate that. Yeah. Jags need a quarterback. They do. So there, there are a lot of teams that need a quarterback. I it's actually, like, are, are you, if you're the Jaguars, and not to cut you off again, but yeah. are you really going to sacrifice pride for a potential Super Bowl? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So here are the teams that I have pegged as needing a quarterback. Uh, potentially in round one, definitely this offseason. Arizona, Buffalo, Cleveland, Denver, Jacksonville, Miami is a maybe. New Orleans is a maybe. I think they do. New York Giants is a maybe. I think they do. New York Jets, yes. Pittsburgh, yes. They will. Washington, maybe. That's 11 teams. Did you say Los Angeles? Los Angeles? I would add the Chargers to that list as a maybe. The Chargers. Did I put them? No, I didn't. Uh, Did I? No, I didn't. I'm going to put maybe. You're right. I think this is a year that they could go and take a quarterback. Um, I don't know if they'll take one high, but I think they will take one at some point. Um, Cincinnati's a maybe. Yeah, that's true. That's I true. mean, this is a year that they could definitely do it. I would say Baltimore, but I think they need another year uh, before they can get rid of Joe Flacco's contract. Mm-hmm. So, um, Houston set, Indy set, Kansas City set, Rams. Yeah, I mean, I I think New England is also a maybe team because they're going to probably take one in round two, maybe three. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Rudolph, a Falk, or a Laletta go to New England um, because they do have three picks in the first two rounds. I could see Luke Falk. He feels like he fits the best. I, I think Rudolph kind of feels like a kind of like a Brady in that sense, that, that pure pocket passer, not very mobile. Um, you know, coming out, he was kind of a raw product, but he kind of developed. I don't know. Um, I could see that being something that they could justify. I just don't think Falk is accurate enough to be their guy. But um, Kyle Loletta would be a really fun project. They love those FCS guys. And that kid that kid has talent. I don't know how much it will translate to the NFL, but if he has years to grow and improve, I could see it. Have you watched him at all? Not much. Not much. I mean, there's not much tape available. It's It's hard to find being... FCS Richmond, but um, he is going to the combine, which is going to be huge for him. Combine's coming up pretty pretty soon, about a month or two away. It is coming up uh, end of fe- mid February, mid to end February, which is one of my favorite times of the year. Agreed. Waking up early, watching yep. two fellas whisper. Guys, guys in tights, you know, may I talk about bubble butts? You know, you know the whole deal. Um, but may I, man. Yeah, so. Mayock, Eisen, who's the other one that, that also swaps in? Um, Dion is usually on for a little while doing interviews. Was so, Michael Irvin, too, but I mean, like, there's yeah. one guy who's also there. Like, oh, um, that is uh, Daniel Jeremiah. DJ? Nah, yeah. he doesn't He doesn't commentate. Yeah, he does. I think he does for part of the combine. Um, I know he comments. I know he comments yeah, like, on the Yeah, they bring people well. in for comments around the league. I know, I've seen Charles Davis there. Uh, I, but I feel like sometimes they have a third. I know Mayock and Eisen's like the main two. Yeah, I don't know. M- Marshall Falk, maybe. Those are just like guys that come in. Maybe yeah. I'm, maybe I'm remembering incorrectly. Yeah, I have no idea. But either way, let's. Uh, I think before we get into the postseason, let's wrap up the regular season with our predictions and our who should be awards for the season. Okay. All right, I'm in. So you start things off. We're going to be running through, and I'm going to say the awards right now that we're going to be talking about. We will be doing MVP, Offensive Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, Offensive Rookie, Defensive Rookie, and Overall Rookie of the Year, Coach of the Year, and Comeback Player of the Year. So, Bengal, why don't you start things off with your MVP? So this is my personal MVP or my prediction for who will win? Let's do the predictions, and then we'll go through our personal ones. I'm going to say prediction for who will win. I'm going to say Todd Gurley, and I also think it will be Todd Gurley. Wow. I, I, 
Yeah. I think in years past, you know, and granted Todd Gurley didn't rush for 2000 yards the way Adrian Peterson did when he won it, but more overall touchdowns by a considerable amount. Tom Brady kind of fell off near the end of the season. Don't even try to argue statistically fact. Russell Wilson's, I think, still feels like a dark horse to me. Um, I don't think Drew Brees is really in the conversation for that. So I think it pretty much comes down to three guys, Todd Gurley, Tom Brady, Russell Wilson, and I think Todd Gurley has the edge. Okay, well, I'm going to say that the person who's going to get it and the person who deserves it is Tom Brady. Um, First off for Gurley, the average yardage for a running back who won the MVP was around 2,350 yards from scrimmage, and he came up with 2,093. Um, He had 19 total touchdowns and five fumbles. He was a main piece of one of the best offenses in football. He had an excellent season overall, but he was not the most efficient. He was not the best running back, in my opinion, in certain areas. I think he definitely has had some issues running the football. I think he's overall the best running back this season, but I don't think he was the best runner, and I don't think he was the best receiver. So for that, I think it's a little bit different, but I thought he had an excellent season overall. But to win MVP as a running back, you have to either set records or be close in rushing yards or set records or be close in touchdowns, and he wasn't in either. So for me, based on historical precedent over the past 20 years, I'm going to say that it, I just don't see it happening. As for Brady, he came in, first off, seventh in drops among quarterbacks this season. Seven most, seventh most drops for a quarterback. His yards in the air. So this is showing that it's not yards after the catch like someone like Drew Brees, who came in with only 45.5% of his yardage coming in the air, which is the second lowest in the NFL behind or ahead of only Brett Hundley, who we all know was doing that for a different reason. Um, Brady was fifth in yardage coming through the air at almost 60%, which means that this is a year that he is going out there and he is doing things. He's throwing the ball downfield. He's being excellent. Accuracy-wise, he dropped to sixth because of the way that they played towards the end of the season, but still 76% accuracy is pretty good. Um, Deep passing accuracy is also still pretty good. That is fifth in the NFL. Tom Brady, fifth in accuracy in the NFL, and he threw 80 passes deep. 80 passes deep is third most, so it's not a small sample size either. Under pressure, he was the best quarterback in terms of passer rating by a lot, 96.6%. The next best was 83.9% in Jameis Winston. Accuracy percent was just below Drew Brees under pressure. Kept clean. He wasn't as good. Um, Obviously, that tends to happen. Still 105 passer rating and still 70%. Regardless, he was also under pressure quite a bit. Statistically, he was great. Performance-wise, outside of probably the Miami game, he was great. I think that Miami game was terrible, but I also don't think that he was getting much help from anybody. I think without Rob Gronkowski, that team is a much worse offense overall. He underthrew two interceptions there to Xavier Howard, which were just not good throws or decisions, in my opinion. Oh, I I absolutely agree. I think both of those were bad throws. Um, I thought Cooks played the routes decently, but they weren't good decisions and they weren't good throws either. Um, But that team is much worse, obviously, without Gronkowski, much worse without Julian Edelman. Um, to have both of them out at the same time is devastating. And we saw it. And this is also a team that they had faced twice in three weeks, which that's never easy. And they never do well in Miami anyway, but that's not an excuse. He did not play well in that game. I thought he was really good versus Pittsburgh. Um, I thought he carved them up in man coverage, despite the fact that they were pressing the Patriots wide receivers and they were struggling to create separation outside of Rob Gronkowski. And even though he did throw some more interceptions than are expected from him, Um, The interception against the Bills that was returned for a touchdown was all Kenny Britt. He ran the wrong depth, which you can clearly tell based on the way that the ball was thrown. Um, You know, new guy in the offense, it happens. But still, led the league in touchdowns, right? Did he lead the league in touchdowns? He only threw 32 touchdown passes, and for me, an MVP isn't a quarterback who throws two touchdowns per game on average. Sorry, he was third in touchdowns. But... I don't, I don't like touchdowns as a measure of anything, really. Yeah, it only wins games, right? No, team touchdowns wins games. That's that's what matters. Fair. So this is the, I think it's the 
fourth time in his career where he had 4,500 yards, 30 plus touchdowns, and eight or less interceptions. Every other quarterback in the league has only had one season of that each. Uh, Aaron Rodgers and someone else did. Uh, Matt Ryan, I think. Those are the only two. So, yards per attempt, he did drop a little bit. He ended up fifth, but I think Brady's the MVP, and I think I think he's been robbed of it and an All-Pro a few times in his career. So it'd be nice to see him finally get one in a year that it's not exactly a clear-cut winner. I think Wentz probably would have gotten it if he hadn't gotten hurt, but I still think Brady was more deserving. Moving on. Moving on. That was a player long of the year because we yes. can talk about Tom Brady, or you could at least, for the entire rest of the 20 minutes we have here. I could talk about him for the entire hour every episode. <laughs> okay, offensive, offensive player, player of the year. Who do you have? Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley, Todd Gurley. Prediction and expectation. I'm, I'm in the same boat. Uh, I don't really think we need to talk about it all that much more. Talk about him a little bit um, in my MVP prediction. Yes. So we're pretty much set on that. What about Defensive Player of the Year? Defensive Player of the Year, I think they're going to give it to Calais Campbell. But okay. I think Harrison Hitman Smith really is the defensive player of the year i think he was the best player in football this year on the screen is a chart most people think of hitman as a free safety this chart showed his his run defense grade was best in the league at safety this shows harrison smith's snaps by position if you take a look at the stream basically he lined up as a linebacker a little bit over 25% of the time. He lined up as a slot corner about 25% of the time. He lined up at strong safety about 20% of the time. He lined up at edge 20% of the time. He lined up at outside, or sorry, free safety, not strong safety. Lined up as free safety about 20% of the time. Edge 20% of the time. Outside corner, a sliver. Strong safety, a sliver. This man literally did all of this. And was one of the best in coverage and run defense. This man was setting the edge as a safety. He was setting the edge better than defensive linemen. Easily my MVP. The best player in football on the best defense in football. The number one third down defense by 8%. The second best scoring, uh, the best scoring defense. Second best scoring defense per drive in football. The leader of that defense and the most important player on it interesting um i think that chandler jones will win it but tacos for loss um had a really insane season statistically however my defensive player of the year would be aaron donald i think i don't really have to explain this much although i will i think he is the best defensive player in football that's why i have him winning the award over harrison smith Played 14 games out of the possible 16. It's so unreal. 11 sacks. However, um, his run stop percentage was 12th of all 3-4 defensive ends. Stop percentage was 8.2, and he had 21 stops. But that's not even to talk about his pass rush productivity, which was by far the top of the NFL. Um, And he had 91 total pressures, which was nearly double the next of anyone um, going after the quarterback, 91 total pressures, what? missed two games. The next one. That, that wasn't nearly double. Well, I was looking at Matt Ioannidis. Um, Cameron Hayward had 62. It was very good. Geno Atkins uh, had 70. 66 hurries for Aaron Donald, 13 yeah. quarterback hits, and 12 sacks. Yeah. Incredible season. Pass rush percentage was 100 on those. Um Okay, so I have some statistics for you about Aaron Donald. Hit me with Aaron Donald. Who's... The 91 pressures was the most in football. Yes. Von Miller was second with 83. Okay. Aaron From Donald. Interior defensive lineman. Yes. Aaron Donald generated pressure on 18.84% of his pass rush snaps. That's ridiculous. Which is the highest in the NFL. Second was Demarcus Lawrence at 18.59. Von Miller was 18.57, and then everybody else was much lower. Chandler Jones, just going back to him for a moment. I only went off him because of sacks. It's what I know. He's win it and... Yeah, just to, just to clarify, not for you, just for people. Sure. 
among the top 30 edge defenders in terms of pressures, Chandler Jones was 21st in pressure percentage per pass rush snap. Of the 30 players who had the most pressures in the NFL, he was 21st. He was below Trey Flowers, Cameron Jordan, Adrian Claiborne, Brandon Graham, Carlos Dunlap, Vinny Curry, Mario Addison, Chris Long, Jabal Sheard, Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, Melvin Ingram, Terrell Suggs, Ryan Kerrigan, Clayus Campbell, Yannick Ngakwe, Carl Lawson, yeah. Cam what? Yannick Ngakwe. Damn it! <laughs> Yannick Ngakwe, Carl Lawson, Carl Lawson, Cameron Wake, Von Miller, Demarcus Lawrence, and if you expand it over to the interiors as well, he was behind Cameron Hayward, Geno Atkins, and Aaron Donald. So basically, he was 24th in the league among players with over 50 pressures. Not efficient. I don't think he should win it. I think he will, though. Yeah. Oh, by the way, your boy JPP was 30th of 30 with 9.8%, and yeah, 29 was at 12%. Yeah, season. OV didn't either, but Vernon was yeah. injured. Yeah, uh, but Demiel Hunter was 29th, and he You're was 4% better. You're also not factoring in if we're going to rip on the Giants real quick. The Giants don't have a good system of subbing in and out their defensive ends. Yeah, I know. He played a lot. And JPP play the entire game, every single snap. Yeah, I know. It's really terrible. Which is not the best way to do it. Like, even the top yeah. players who played the most snaps in the NFL on the edge are, like, at 75. Or, you know, and then they're, like, at 95. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's, the Giants are, like, above 90. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Being JPP. So, uh, I, I was obviously, just, uh, pressures are going to be down. I was just busting your, your gut. I just um, set you in your place for a second. The Giants aren't good, obviously, but... Yeah, I know. But JPP is a decent player. Olivier Vernon's a very good player, in my opinion. Even though he didn't have a great season, he was injured. But he should bounce back. I think he's a very good player. I wouldn't call him a great one, but um, that's a whole issue for another day. Let's keep moving. All right, so we just covered Defensive Player of the Year. How about the rookies how about offensive rookie of the year who do you think who you got i'm doubling up again just like i did with mvp i'm going alvin kamara yep. um and i think it was kareem hunt's award to lose and i think he lost it alvin <laughs> kamara just came on kareem hunt kind of ran into a valley and uh, that peak was so far back in the in the distance in my opinion kamara just got better week in and week out was dynamic changed the saints offense in my opinion um, and I think he's the reason that they won the division. I know that seems like an outlandish statement. No, you're right. He brought he their is. offense to a whole nother level, uh, whether it was in the passing game, whether it was in the running game. Alvin Kamara could do it all. He is my pick, and he is also who I think should win it or will win it. So yeah. Alvin Kamara, Alvin Kamara, such a good player. Alvin Kamara, uh, last time I checked, was two yards per carry better than Todd Gurley. Rushing. Yeah, plus, he averaged plus 6.1, which is ridiculous. So it was about a yard and a half after all things were said and done. He also caught 81 balls yeah. as a so, running back. So, well, I don't think he's the best running back in the game. Like, I don't think he's in that tier yet because I don't trust his down-in and down-out durability until he can actually show that he can handle a workflow between the tackles as an all-purpose running back. He's an extremely dynamic weapon. Uh, he's a guy who I'd say is going to win it. And I also think he is deserving of it, despite the fact that Kareem Hunt led the league with 77 missed tackles at the running back position, which is unreal. So very good season, but I just think Alvin Kamara came on. I th I think the failures of the uh, of the Chiefs at the second half of the season cost him as much as the fact that they weren't using him particularly well. Um, fun fact: Dion Lewis led the league in elusive rating, just overall. Um, Kareem Hunt was second, but this is 50% of snaps. Let's see. Okay, never mind. Alvin Kamara led the league by a lot. <laughs> um, at 108.5, Kenyon Drake was second at 96.3. Deion Lewis was third at 73.2. Kareem Hunt fourth at 73.1. LeGarrette Blunt fifth. So basically, those guys make a bunch of people miss. And Alvin Kamara made 57 different people miss on 28 when rushing 29 when receiving um 3.83 yards after contact is second best in the league and Kenyon drake led the league at 4.29 keep an eye on him moving forward okay defensive rookie of the year who you got 
Uh, I think it's a toss up between two players. And I'm listening. I like one player I'm more listening. than the next. And perhaps that's why I have him winning it over the other. I'm not sure. I, I hate to be biased, but I'm going to go Marshawn Lattimore and Marshawn Lattimore for who I think will win it and who I would have to win it. I think maybe for Davies White came on near the end of the season uh, and he did play tremendously well. Marshawn Lattimore was the best cornerback in football when he was healthy, got injured, stagnated that a little bit, um, still came back pretty strong, and even playing through injuries was the top cornerback in the NFL. In his first year, Tredavious White, also incredible. Toss-up between the two of those players. Uh, I think Marshawn Lattimore is going to win it, though. I think Lattimore had a more impressive season. I think the fact that he was also tracking people was very, very impressive. Um you know, he was covering all different types of receivers, and he established himself as already an elite corner in this league, which is just unbelievable. Um, in terms of yards per coverage snap allowed, I don't know where exactly he is. I know it got a little bit messed up. Yeah, he ended up at 46th, but that's because he was injured, and that's that's a whole separate issue. But um, he's the guy who I think is going to win it. He's also the guy who I think is the most deserving um, he is legitimate candidate for defensive player of the year as well. He has transformed the Saints defense with being a shutdown corner. He has made everyone else around him better. And he's a special, special player. Unfortunately, there are slight injury concerns in his background. And that is something that will have to be looked at moving forward. Um, overall rookie of the year. I'm going Alvin Kamara again. I think it's a toss-up between him and Marshawn Lattimore. I think just Alvin Kamara was just too good. Yeah, I think Kamara is going to get it. Um, deserving, I'd probably go Lattimore. Yeah, but yeah, everyone loves offense. Yeah, they do. I, 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 I would probably bet on that. Um, let's see. Okay, um, one player that I do want to mention for comeback player of the year. We'll get to that in a minute. Coach of the year. Sean McVay. I am very inclined to say McVay. I, I don't know how you could go anything else. I think he will win it. I'm going Mike Zimmer. I think Zimmer has okay, been okay. phenomenal. This is a team that has the best defense in the league. I know you'll dispute that. Say Jacksonville is better. At the very worst, it's I think the Jacksonville second. Jacksonville has better individual players. Yes, but they're less disciplined. So I think as a unit, they're not as good. But regardless... In my opinion, best defense in the league. In my opinion, a top five offense in the league. With issues on the offensive line, with their star running back getting injured. Pat Elfline with a, played very, very good as a rookie. Yes, their, F, their offensive line is underrated. It is, but they've they uh, I think they've only had their starting five play like two games together this year. Mm. It's it's been a revolving door, and they've played well. Keenum's their third quarterback, <laughs> and he's been really good. I mean, this game plan, this point of attack, I think Zimmer has been phenomenal. I think McVay has been the hot young stud with the top tier offense, and he's allowing Wade Phillips to do everything on defense. But I think Mike Zimmer, who has a hand in both, is more deserving. I, I would say, that... what is the more talented team for players? Minnesota by a lot. And I think McVay uh, showcased that he can do something with an offense that doesn't particularly have all these playmakers. Now you can argue, all right, Sammy Watkins is a former top tier player. He was drafted as one Yeah. injury concerns, held him back. Todd Gurley is a great player. Um, Robert Woods is okay. And yeah. he had a fantastic season offensive and line, literally Whit nothing except for Andrew Whitworth, who they brought in. Who's a so, stud. I mean, you got the rest of the offensive line bad. Yeah. Yeah. Jared Goff isn't a stud quarterback by any means. He, he's he's a below average quarterback put into a really good position. Yeah, so I want to say McVay really made Jared Goff shine. He yep. made Cooper Cup look like a beast. Not to say that Cooper Cup isn't. I think Cooper Cup was a good player, but yeah. he made him look like way better. Like he's made him look like a Wes Welker type in New England offense. Fun, fun uh, fact: I saw Cooper Cup at uh, L at EA play, and I thought he was a coaching assistant or a someone because he I thought he was a fan he looked so small he I mean he he it looked like he had no muscle tone 
Well, you're you're a big guy. I know, but I mean, he looked like he was five ten, like one sixty. I mean, he looked small, and I'm like, oh my god, this guy's gonna take hits from linebackers, and he's done an excellent job. But it was just that just a fun little story. But yeah. I think you're right. I think McVay has done an excellent job with what he's had, and his play calling has been innovative and has been exciting. I mean, this is the most exciting team coming into the postseason, in my opinion. Um, and give kudos to Wade Phillips. That defense has been phenomenal. And they've gotten great production out of John Johnson. They've gotten great production, obviously, out of Aaron Donald. That's season at safety. Yeah. I mean, LaMarcus Joyner has been an elite-level safety at free safety. I mm-hmm. mean, they have transformed that defense with that 3-4 under front that Wade Phillips loves to run. Um, unfortunately, Robert Quinn has still been bad. Such oh. a promising player. Mm. Then he had a sick season once. Yeah. Once. Once. But Come back last player one. of the year. Comeback player of the year, you start because I want to do an honorable mention. I don't know. I don't Ben Kelsey. Shut up. Shut up. I already know where it's going. Keenan Allen coming off injury. Keenan Allen just showcased that he is a top receiver when healthy. Um, just so, so talented, so good. Phillip Rivers is great. But Keenan Allen is next level. Had nearly 1,400 receiving yards, over 100 catches, uh, and six touchdowns. He's so really so in his good. first full healthy season. So good. So talented. He's top five receiver. Top uh, – oh, oh, there's too many good ones for me to say that. Uh, well, I'll tell you mine. Julio Jones, in no particular order, Julio Jones, A.J. Green, Odell Beckham Jr., Antonio Brown, Keenan Allen. DeAndre Hopkins, very, very close. I'd put him at six. Maybe maybe I'd swap DeAndre Hopkins and A.J. Green, actually. That's what I'm going to do. A.J. Uh, Green, th- this very is... good still. Getting a bit older, I think. He's th- moved to number six. This is a topic for another day. Yeah. I have Hopkins at number two behind Antonio Brown. Yeah, Hopkins top five. Hopkins number two behind I don't only that. Antonio right. Brown. That That's how I feel. Fair. But I'd say Keenan Allen's easily top ten when he's healthy. Health is a big factor, though. Easily top ten, yeah. Easily. Easily. Get a little adventurous, Swami. I am. That's why I just said DeAndre Hopkins is number two in the league. All right, fair, fair. <laughs> so, I'm going to so, – so, is that who you think is going to win it or who deserves it? Uh, Both. Okay. I think Gronk is going to win it because <laughs> – There it is. <laughs> because NFL Honors likes to give it to guys like Gronkowski who are in the spotlight. Uh, Keenan Allen is not a sexy player in the sense that outside of fantasy football and diehards, a lot of people don't know his name. So I think it's a popularity contest a little bit, and I think Gronk is probably going to get it. I would give it to Keenan Allen easily. I think Allen is more deserving. I think he had a phenomenal season. Um, He was a huge factor in their return to almost making the playoffs. And my honorable mention, though, is William Jackson III. You know, round of applause for that one. Really loves him out of Houston. He had an incredible season. Only one interception, uh, if I recall. But yep. really, really good season. Locked he, players he, down. He was, from the time that he came back, the best cornerback in football by far. 26.4 coverage snaps per reception. Number one in the league. Yards per coverage snap, 0.38. Number one in the league. Brian Body Calhoun was number two. Covered snaps per William Jackson might have been my highest rated corner in that class. Yep. And covered snaps per target. It's not like people aren't targeting him. He was the sixth least targeted. So it's he allowed 15 receptions on 43 targets for 151 yards, zero touchdowns, one interception, 36.1 NFL rating. You would have a higher passer rating if you threw the football into the ground every single throw. That is how good William Jackson the third was. AJ Boye as well, thirty one point six NFL rating, but he doesn't get comeback player of the year honors, obviously. Yeah, six season last year too. Yeah, Boye came on only because of injuries too. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was he was number like five on the depth chart coming into last season, which is crazy in retrospect. But that's who I am making my as my honorable mention. We have a couple minutes left because we're gonna run this a little bit late because there's no Thursday night football today. Playoffs. Titans, Chiefs, Falcons, Rams, Bills, Jaguars, Panthers, Saints. The AFC matchups are total garbage. The NFC matchups are going to be phenomenal. I cannot wait for all four games. Let's start with Titans, Chiefs. DeMarco Murray is declared inactive. Who you got? 
I don't think that is a big of much uh, as big of a factor as you might make it seem. DeMarco Murray has been pretty much a non-factor for the Titans this entire season. Yeah. Uh, the Titans have shown an Ill- inability to score, and the Chiefs are good at scoring the football. They have too many playmakers. They get in the end zone. They score points. I don't think this is going to be a very good game. Uh, I think the Chiefs got this one. I'm going to say it's going to be closer than you think, but I still think that the Chiefs are going to win this game. Um, Kansas City has been really weird this year. They started extremely hot. They ended sixth in points, fifth in yards. But Alex Smith, while he's put up good touchdown numbers, and I mean, he's looked good this season in some capacities. He's looked better statistically than he has on the field. And Kevin Biard has been a problem. Tyreek Hill. Byard. Byard. I, I, I'm just, you know, I'm going to start Kevin Biarder. You know, some, some ridiculous pronunciation. Just so everyone knows you're being facetious, so you can't get a... Exactly. Get a, you, the wrong name. You've okay. seen through my a ruse. Um... A ruse? What, you mean a rouse? You mean just, you mean ruse? <laughs> no, I'm, I, I started there. <laughs> what? I, I started what with ruse. <laughs> I need I'm to buy you a dictionary or something. <laughs> That doesn't help me with pronunciations. <laughs> I mean, you screwed up. Bu- the- buy me an audio dictionary, okay? There you go. <laughs> you, you owe me a present for, for the holidays. Tyreek yeah. Hill, over a 1,000 over a yards, seven touchdowns. He has been excellent. Um, he's really emerged. And he would have been a second-round pick at, at the very worst if he didn't have the off the field. But I think the Chiefs are the team that's got this. Um, I do have concerns about them overall just because I don't think they're a very good team but I think they're good enough. Uh, what would you say is the final score? Uh, 27-9. Wow. Um, I'm going to say it's going to be 24... No, 23 to 20. I think the Titans the are going to make it. can't score that many points. I think against this Chiefs defense... This. I don't care who they're playing. They, they couldn't. I mean, the Cardinals have some good pieces, but they scored like what six six points against the Cardinals or something like that. But they beat the Jaguars. Nah, it's... they beat the Jaguars. They did I it. I don't. I don't think the Titans are. They good. swept the Jaguars. That's fine. They dropped thirty seven on the Jaguars in Maybe Jacksonville. Maybe they perform better against better defenses and play worse against worse defense. Or, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they scored twenty three on the Rams. They scored 23 on the Cardinals. They scored 24 on the Texans, who aren't good. Um, I mean, they've been a middle-of-the-pack team. They're, they're not that special. Um, their play calling's terrible, and yeah, so. I would give them at most 13. I You don't think they're going to play some prevent and make this a little bit more respectable? <laughs> like the Patriots did with the Chiefs a couple years ago, when Alex Smith was like 4.5 yards per attempt? I would give them at most 13 points. Okay. Okay, Mr. Snooty. Um, Falcons at Rams. This is going to be, in my opinion, this is going to be the game of the first round by far. Um, It is the defending NFC champs versus the Young Bucks, the up-and-comers. I'm going to... I'm inclined to go with the Rams. That's really not that surprising. I'm going to pick the Falcons. I think the stage is going to be too big for Jared Goff against a defense that is very swarming. I wouldn't say that the Falcons' defense is a top unit in the league, but I feel like they have a lot of legitimate speed, and I don't think yeah, Goff's... very, very fast. Deion Jones is a killer. Yeah. Robert Alford has some great speed. Keanu Neal. Keanu Neal's not that fast, so don't go there. No, but I mean, he still closed in and made some very big plays. Keanu Neal's incredible. He's a great yeah. player. Not that yeah. fast, though. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Um, they were the eighth ranked defense in points allowed, ninth in yards. This is not a pushover of a team by any no. stretch of the imagination. Um, they were a very good run defense. Grady Jarrett has been a game changer against, and he's facing an offensive line that is not good. Um, you know, this is going to be a very interesting game. I'm going to pick the Falcons in this one. I think the Rams have pieces, but. I think this is a little early for them. If they prove me wrong, fantastic. I can't wait to see more of them because I think they're so fun to watch. But the way that the Rams have played against good competition this year has left me a bit concerned. That's my take on them. I'm still, I'm, I'm, 
I'm in a, in the odd spot. I think the Rams have surprised me in the past, and uh, I have bet against the Falcons. <laughs> you you got to contemplate. I'm going to say Atlanta. I'm going to say it's a close game. I think the difference in this game will be the speed of Deion Jones containing Todd Gurley. I think that's pretty legitimate. I think that's fair. I think that is fair. Um, it's going to be... Line? I'm going to say 38-35. That's a high-scoring affair. Uh, no, 38-31. 38-31 Atlanta. I, I, I think this is going to be an offensive showcase between Sark and McVay. Even though I don't trust Sark, I think the linebackers in Los Angeles are not going to be able to contain Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman. And Tevin ex- Coleman is very good. Expect a nice, pure tight end throwback one of these times off a of play action. One of the staples of the Atlanta Falcons to Austin Hoopa. <laughs> I'm going to say final score line will be 31 31- 28. Atlanta? Okay. Miller. All right. Bills at Jaguars. Let's go through this one. I'm going to say quickly. 27, actually. 27. Okay. Let's go through this one quickly. Jaguars, Bills. Jacksonville, better team overall. Except? Except what? Quarterback? Yes. Yeah, I don't know what you're asking there. I, I just wanted to I just wanted to make sure that the people understand that Blake Bortles is terrible. Robbie, um, you mean? Robbie Bortles and John Stafford. Is that Matt Stafford's real first name? Yes. Is it really? Yeah. No way. <laughs> it's John Matthew Stafford. That'd be very interesting. <laughs> I mean, at, at least it's not Quintoris Lopez uh, Jones. Jones, yeah. <laughs> I know that one. Adriel Jeremiah Green. And you really bring them all out today. Quallin Hightower. Is that Tim Hightower's real first name? No, Dante. Oh, really? Don, yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, some of these guys, because the NFL injury report has all of these names listed, it is fantastic. Like, if you just want to go through the injury report and see some of these names, you will have a blast. <laughs> um, yeah, I know a lot of them. The only one I didn't know was Dante Hightower there. Or, yeah. I guess Matt Stafford as well. John? <laughs> yeah. Why? It's it's weird. Um, How do I know Quintor, uh, Quintoris Lopez Jones? I can't. I don't know John. <laughs> because Quintoris Lopez Jones is a fantastic name. That is fairly ridiculous. Um, Panthers at Saints. Saints uh, home field advantage I think plays a big factor here. I also just think the Saints are better. I think you're going to see a more healthy Marshawn Lattimore than you've seen in the past, and he is the key to that defense. You've shown. Or not you, you haven't, but the I Saints mean, have shown have. growth from incredible rookies and players. Uh, like, for example, Marcus Williams had a great season at free safety. Um, Ken Crawley at cornerback number two has had a really good season. Cameron Jordan's had a defensive player of the year caliber season. You know, yep. David Onyemata on the inside, Sheldon Rankins, Alex Okafor. Great group of guys. They're going to yep. shut down Scram Newton. Wow. Well, first off, the Panthers played terribly against the Saints twice this year. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have any faith in them as a as a team against this squad. Interestingly enough, the first two losses of the season for the Saints were because of defense. Then everything started to click. They put Ken Crawley in. They kind of figured things out a little bit. But the loss against the Rams, the loss against the Falcons, and the loss this week against the Buccaneers, could it be hinged on Drew Brees? No. Okay, not the Buccaneers. But the other two, yes. They were all Drew Brees' fault. Totally his fault. I mean, Alvin Kamara against the Falcons was out in the first quarter. You can't throw an interception, Drew. He doesn't that was a terrible pass. In the game. Hand it, it off. It was a terrible pass. Awful pass. And just because they got extremely lucky on turnovers with Matt Ryan, who still has the lowest turnover per, uh, turnover-worthy turnover throw percentage in the NFL this year by a large margin, he's thrown, I think, five turnover-worthy passes. And he has how many interceptions on the season? 28. 
I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe three. You, you see what I did there? Um, yeah. Matt Ryan, 12 interceptions. 12 interceptions. And he threw five passes that were turnover worthy. That is terrible luck. I didn't, so, I didn't have high hopes for Matt Ryan. I didn't think... I didn't think he could repeat what he did, yeah. but I'm picking the Saints, and I think it's going to be pretty easy. I I don't think Carolina's a good enough team to match up with them. Um, but you never know. It's not easy beating the same team three times in one season. Give me 38 to 17. Give me 31 to 13. Carol, uh, Carolina's going to lose this game. Yeah, so cool. we both pick Atlanta. We both pick Kansas City. We both pick New Orleans. And we both pick Jacksonville. A lot of disparity here this week. Yep. I blame you entirely. <laughs> so, any... Oh, cl- oh, 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 I see the chat right now. Bengal did not say Rams. Bengal said he was inclined to pick the Rams, but did not. I didn't say that you... We're said, on the same page. I, I didn't say you picked the Rams. I'm looking at the chat. Oh, right. okay. I had to break the fourth wall for a minute. Break down the walls of Jericho. Jericho? Yes. What? We're so, clowns. So any closing notes for the Cover 2 podcast, episode number six? Um, we are coming to an end of the regular season, but I can assure you guys things will only heat up as the weather gets colder, as Ooh. the offseason comes in, Ooh. as it warms up. Offseason, NFL draft, combine, it's all coming. Should be a good time. Oh, yeah. We're going to do more prospects. We're going to be talking about our thoughts and opinions about the Combine. Um, Definitely the Super Bowl. We're going to be doing all sorts of things. Trade deadline stuff. Facts, opinions, hot takes. Terrible, terrible things coming during the free agency period. Um, Like me saying that Joris Jenkins was overpaid. um, Which, coming in, he probably was. But that was underestimated. He played out to his price tag. Yes, he did. Um Logan Ryan did not. <laughs> not at all. He's been quiet. Today. Olivier Vernon didn't, but there was no way he could have. Which is uh, Olivier Vernon had a very good season for playing ninety four percent of his. No, snaps. but but I'm saying you, he would have had to have been an elite level player to you, you just can't that play like every single snap of the game and still yeah, no. pick up you know fifteen plus sacks in a season. Yeah, no. it's just I mean, not sacks sacks are needed, but as long as you're generating pressure a reasonable amount, but he, he's not. They're they're overusing him. They're they're Last misusing him. Um, yeah, he did. He he was up there. He wasn't elite, but he was up there. He had a very good season. Yeah, but this year was less so. But yeah. again, he's like maybe I shouldn't play through every injury I have. I mean, maybe you shouldn't, but at the same time, maybe you shouldn't wear short sleeves and negative ten degrees. But it, apparently, all the teammates pressure them to do so. And if you don't, you're a wuss. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. It is. It is. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the Cover 2 Podcast, episode number six. I am Moonlight Swami for Bengal, the biggest Bengals fan in the world. And we will be talking to you guys next time. Peace. Say something before I end it. Say you're a Giants fan. Say something. Please. Don't leave me hanging. Don't do it! DeAndre Hopkins, second best receiver in football. Peace.